the 2021 NFL Draft is finally over and we could finally get a good look on the next New York Giants. Who are going to be our next stars? Who's not going to make the team? Uh, how well did Dave Gettleman do in his fourth draft as New York Giants GM? We're going to get right into it here. Let's get started. Content. You're going to find a lot of New York Giants content and regular NFL content uh, just like this one. So that being said, let's start off with the first pick the New York Giants have made. And before, before we even do that, let's just congratulate Dave Gettleman on his fourth draft and how how much he dominated this NFL draft. I mean, he single-handedly won this draft. There are a couple of other teams that had really good drafts, the Jets, the Ravens. You could you could argue some some teams had good drafts, but the Giants absolutely couldn't sit still in the first three rounds, first and foremost. They traded down with their first pick, which nobody thought would ever happen. There is right turns in NASCAR, apparently. That, that's what everybody keeps saying. Um, and then the second round pick, we trade, traded down again and still got possibly the second or the best edge rusher in this class. And we were, and then we traded up in the third round to grab ourselves a cornerback. We're going to go over every single pick, but... What what Dave Gettleman did was so unprecedented of his nature uh, that that it, it amazes me, and the fact that he's really really on it, like he's serious about making a push for the New York Giants, and he did he did a phenomenal job in this draft. Even Dave Gettleman haters cannot deny the job that he's done in this draft. So let's start off with the first pick. The New York Giants traded down to the 20th spot, picking up next year's first round pick. And then next year's fourth round pick, along with a fifth round pick, to go back pretty much nine spots and pick up all, all that draft capital for the Chicago Bears to pick up Justin Fields and the Giants selected Kadarius Tony, wide receiver out of Florida. Now, if you guys saw my initial reaction, I was fresh off of being upset about the Devontae Smith uh, you know, Devontae Smith being drafted to the Philadelphia Eagles and them trading up and that whole debacle, uh, that reaction went pretty pretty uh, viral, I guess. So, uh, for, welcome to everybody that's new that, that found me from that uh, video. But, uh, Kadarius Tony completely slipped my mind. Now, when I did my earlier mock drafts and I was doing live streams about where these prospects could potentially go, Kadarius Tony was a guy that I had in between that 20 and 25 range. I had him going to Chicago, had him going to Indy, had him going to Jacksonville. So he's definitely, definitely a prospect for that range. It's just that when I when I first heard the the uh, the pick, I was expecting you know uh, Aziz Ojolari, who we'll get to later. I was expecting Aziz Ojolari with that number 20th spot. Quiddy Pay, which I would have been not happy about. Uh, Rashad Bateman was a guy. And then I, I even talked myself into a Terrace Marshall, uh, drafting Terrace Marshall that high. I completely slipped out of my mind, Kadarius Tony. I didn't think the Giants would really use him just or draft him because of Jason Garrett's kind of incompetence in the offense. And I don't know if you would be using Kadarius Tony to your best strengths. Um, it, it, in Jason Garrett's offense because it's so vanilla. But this tells me right now that the New, that the New York Giants uh, are going to be expanding that offense, adding Kenny Galladay in there, John Ross, um, you know, Kadarius Tony. It, it just opens up a lot for that offense, and possibly Jason Garrett could change things up. But on to my pick and 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 what I think about Kadarius Tony in general. Kadarius Tony is. A, a guy that primarily a slot receiver. If you really, if you really look at Kadarius Tony, he is just a playmaker. Just that—that's th that's all you can really call him—a playmaker. He really doesn't comp necessarily to a certain player. A lot of people call him a Tyreek Hill because of how fast he is. But I really uh, uh, compare Kadarius Tony to Alvin Kamara, and I know a lot of people are like, "Well, Kid Blue, how is Alvin Kamara?" like Kadarius Tony, or rather, how is Kadarius Tony like Alvin Kamara? They play different positions. If you look at Kadarius Tony, the way he handles the ball, the way he performs as a ball carrier, what he does with the ball in his hands, it's very similar to Alvin, Alvin Kamara. You watch Kadarius Tony and you watch Alvin Kamara play, when the ball is in their hands, they are they are just the same player. Now, before the ball is in their hands, of course, it's different because Alvin Kamara runs the ball, Kadarius Tony uh, you know, receives the ball. 
or you know goes on on a route uh, sometimes Alvin does that but still Kadarius Tony is new to the wide receiver position this is a guy that barely got any looks at wide receiver or was barely on the field for the first three years of his Florida career and then this past season in 2020 is where he really took off before that in the previous three seasons his career total uh, and his his career season high actually his season high for yards uh, were not anything over than 250 per year so he wasn't getting anything as far as production going but he was he found his way to get just under a thousand yards I believe 800 900 yards had like 10 touchdowns this guy was averaging a, a lot of yards per per reception he was just a deep threat now Kadarius Tony is not going to be your number one receiver and that's not really what we drafted him for although we did use a first round pick on him we have Kenny Galladay for that what we need Kadarius Tony to be is just a playmaker a guy to get the ball in his hands you've seen last year how Jason Garrett was just trying to get guys uh guys opportunities right he was trying to get Sterling Shepard involved trying to get Evan Evan Ingram involved with those sweeps and those handoffs and those misdirections and uh those screen passes you know stuff like that to really try to get some momentum in a game now it didn't really work for the Giants favor last season because obviously that's not really in their skill set Sterling Shepard didn't come out of college college you know getting sweeps but Kadarius Tony did. Kadarius Tony is a specialist in that. In fact, I had I said the best two plays he makes on the field besides going deep because of his speed are whip routes, which he is absolutely deadly in and found a weird way of running a whip route that I've never seen before. Um, it, it's almost like how a running back would do it, but it's so effective. You guys are probably looking at it right now, but it's so effective. And the, the other thing I really had him uh, doing a great job in is end arounds and, and sweeps and, and, you know, the the... the uh, pre-snap motion handoffs, you know, that's what I really think his bread and butter is at. Now, of course, you're not going to sign a wide receiver, uh, or you're not going to draft a wide receiver in the first round for that. Um, his his route running is not quite there, but he even said it himself. He's barely scratched the surface about what he can do as a wide receiver. Um, that I think the sky's the limit for this kid. And now, if you look at Darius Tony and what his bread and butter is on those sweeps, like we just mentioned, he his his cut inside is absolutely deadly i mean i gotta show you this one play hopefully you guys are seeing it i gotta show you this one play where he took a handoff and stopped on an absolute dime had like plenty of other players going in the other direction including his own and just stops on a dime and 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 gets upfield i mean that's what he's able to do as a ball carrier very very running back like so uh i mean that being said i mean you gotta love Kadarius Tony, and I love him. I hope he, he does a he does a phenomenal job in his rookie season. I hope he performs better than Devontae Smith. He has a lot, uh, you know, a, a lot to do to get to that level. I believe Devontae Smith is a really good wide receiver. So, um, you know, Kadarius Tony is great. My grade for Kadarius Tony plus the trade down with everything involved is an A minus. Now, the reason why I'm giving that. Uh, that in A minus is because I think Rashad Bateman, although we love Kadarius Tony and we're all talking great about him, I feel like Rashad Bateman may have been the better pick there. So, but I still think considering the trade down, considering getting a playmaker like him, and considering how, how much he can really change our offense and really uh, help Jason Garrett expand the playbook, I feel like it is an A. So, that being said, let's move on to Aziz Ojolari. Aziz Ojolari. Uh, was drafted in the second round. Now, the now, the more film I do on Aziz Ojolari, the more I see why he was drafted in the second round. We were so blinded by all of these prospect rankings and mock drafts and things like that that we really didn't really take time to really look at uh, these prospects in depth. If if this was a extremely talented edge rushing class, as you know, we all know this wasn't really a great edge rushing class, especially from the top, like in the first round. Um, if this wasn't a really really good, um, you know, edge rushing class, then I think Aziz Ojolari would have been a second round pick. Now it does amaze me how he was still a second round pick, but honestly, if you really, if you just everything cut and dry and not looking at everything in a blue lens he probably was a second round pick but what I love I love Aziz Ojolari his aggressiveness his high motor he's always willing trying to get to the, the the you know trying to get to the quarterback um he he remains inconsistent there are some games where he makes one great play sometimes at the end of the game sometimes at the beginning of the game but then he completely disappears I mean he eats up blocks and things like that but if you're gonna get a guy like you know a guy like Aziz Ojolari should be you know active all the time if he was you know supposed to be a first round 
round pick. Now, one thing I noticed from Aziz Ojolari is that he just lacks extreme strength and speed, like, 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 elite strength and speed he doesn't have like he has strength just not elite strength he has speed just not elite speed he could cover by the way he has gone out and cover he could cover it's just not his ideal position but it's something that he is experienced with just in case he is asked to do that with the new york giants but man this guy can really get around the edge and sometimes get himself a little speed rush going he's not even known as a speed rusher but sometimes can get it can create a little bit of a speed rush so I really love that about him. There are times where he does not bend, uh, but there are times where he does bend very well. It's just, it, I really wonder why he doesn't bend all the time. How come he doesn't use all of his skill sets um, you know, consistently? I really see two different Aziz Ojolari sometimes when I'm watching tape. Sometimes I see a guy that's completely stiff and doesn't know how to bend and gets caught up and allows the tackle to, to anchor his feet and he is completely, you know, he's not able to move. And then other times he's getting a speed rush going, getting a bend going, uses his arms violently and gets to the quarterback. I see two two different Aziz Ojolari's um, constantly. So uh, I love Aziz Ojolari. I'm going to give this grade an A+. I have to give this, this grade an A+. This fits a need and this is possibly best player available. Remember, this guy should have been drafted in the first round, especially with, with a with a edge rush class as weak as it is. You would think there would be guys just trying to get the best talent they can um, for edge rushers. But uh, Aziz Ojolari, great, great uh, draft pick. We traded down from 42 to 50 and still got this guy. It's an A+. You can't you can't cut it any other way. A plus for Aziz Ojolari. Next, we have a, a, a difficult one for me to really digest. Now, the Giants move up from 76 to 71, giving up their pretty much just their first round pick, obviously swapping third, third round picks, but just giving up an extra fifth round pick, the one that we just got in that Kadarius Tony trade, to move up for Aaron Robinson. Now, what do I think about Aaron Robinson? I think that he's everything that Darnay Holmes is not. And that's not a bad thing, nor is it really a great thing. I'm really indifferent about this because I really don't know who's going to wind up starting. If you ask me, Darnay Holmes has the instinct. Dar Darnay Holmes has the athletic ability. Darnay ha Holmes has a knack for the football. He's very handy. He's able to, to, to force uh, pass, the, pass the defense and all that stuff. Um, you probably wouldn't say Darnay Holmes is great at, you know, uh, um, you know stopping the run and... and, and uh, tackling one-on-one -on -one. well that's what Aaron Robinson can do now Aaron Robinson does not have the instinct that Darnay Holmes has does not have necessarily the athleticism that Darnay Holmes has uh, but one thing I do notice about Aaron Robinson is that first he is also a nickel corner similar to Darnay Holmes I really am not comfortable putting Aaron Robinson on the outside he's a slot corner um, but but you know he's a man-to-man -man corner but he gets lost in zone sometimes gets completely confused about who this guy is can't, struggles to read and react fast enough he allows too many too many uh, uh receptions but one thing this guy is he is a beast of a tackler i mean this guy is not afraid of contact this guy will try his best to stop the run this guy just throws his body everywhere like a safety the way he goes and makes one-on-one -on -one tackles is that of a safety now aaron robinson could very well become a safety it's just that he has to learn how to read and react better um i don't know if this was a great pick for the giants to make if they were trying to you know uh, get some composition for Darnay Holmes. I honestly think Darnay Holmes keeps that job and keeps that job nicely. Now, Aaron Robinson may provide depth if, you know, Dory Jackson goes down, if, you know, in the future, James Robinson, I mean, uh, James uh, Bradbury winds up not, you know, being a New York Giant anymore because he was only signed to a three-year deal. We'll see what happens to with his extension. But, um, Aaron Robinson is a guy that's probably going to be the fourth corner on this roster and would be a really good fourth corner. Do not get me wrong, but I felt like they're, you know, addressing the interior offensive line to give that interior offensive line a little bit of a push, adding in some competition there. You know, guys like Wyatt Davis, he wound up slipping very far, but guys like Wyatt Davis, Deontay Brown was still on the board. Uh, I don't know if Quinn Miners was still on the board. There were a lot of guys still on the board that I really, really, really wanted. Um, so, you know, th that being said, I, I, I really didn't understand this move, but I do like Aaron Robinson as a player. I just don't know if he takes the role of Darnay Holmes or if he just becomes the dime corner. We drafted a dime corner in the third round. That, that's just a little, a little off-putting, but he is a really good, talented player. 
I, I'm not too sure about the trade up. We we didn't give up anything for we we gave up a pick we necessarily didn't even have before you know the draft. So um, I don't mind it. I'm gonna give this grade a B because I trust in Joe Judge. I trust in Dave Gettleman, and I, I feel like they're they're gonna, they're making the right pick here. Maybe Patrick Graham has some influence on this to try to get more defensive backs on the field. Um, but you know I, I I'm not the biggest fan of Aaron Robinson just because I, I feel like he's his read and react is not there. His instincts are way off. His awareness is way off. His, his, his zone coverage is way off. But he has the speed to make up for it. He's a very aggressive guy. Stops the run. Throws his body around like a safety. You know, lays the boom. That's what he does. But... Uh, I don't really know if he's going to be Darnay Holmes as a slot cover corner. So that being said, giving that grade a B. We then move on to our fourth round pick, 116th overall, I believe. Uh, it's escaping my mind now that, now that draft season is over, but I believe 116th overall. The New York Giants select Ellerson Smith, edge rusher out of Northern Iowa. Uh, now, I only know Northern Iowa for David Johnson. You guys know I'm a huge David Johnson guy, especially in his Arizona Cardinals days. I was a huge David Johnson fan, so I know a little bit about Northern Iowa. Um, but, you know, Ellerson Smith is a phenomenal freaking pickup. I mean, I, I, I was going to give this an A+. Plus. I was really going to give this an A+, plus, but again, the interior offensive line dilemma, so I couldn't give it an A+. Plus. But I gave it a solid A because we double-dipped in a position of need and we're adding competition for, for, for two players that had season-ending injuries in Lorenzo Carter and uh, uh, Shane, um, O'Shane Zimenez. So um, adding Ed Ellerson Smith, adding Aziz Ojolari, you know, helping that rotation, getting a healthy rotation of guys in there, creates competition and may the best edge rusher win. Ellerson Smith is one of my favorite prospects in this draft. I didn't even know of him before this, but looking more into him, I'm looking at the tape of Ellerson Smith. This guy is so freaking skinny. I mean, so skinny. And then I watch him in the Senior Bowl, and this guy looks like he ate a child. I mean, this guy is huge now. I mean, he went from looking like Leonard Floyd to looking like Olivier Vernon. I mean, this guy made a huge change. And so... I went, did a little bit of digging. Apparently, he's all the way up to about 260 pounds now. Uh, it looked like he was at a freaking 230 before. So um, I, I really, really uh, like that he added on weight. Now, when I watched him in the Senior Bowl, and shout out to Talking Giants, who did, uh, you know, Bobby, all, Bobby, Bobby with the breakdowns, Bobby's breakdowns. Like, come on. Um, you know, he he um, he did Ellerson Smith's, uh, you know, pro day kind of film review and kind of went to you know the fact that he didn't have much moves uh before now he's adding on moves and adding on weight adding on power ellerson smith for his size when he was playing in 2019 because he opted out in 2020 ellerson's ellerson smith's size in 2019 was very very deceivingly strong i mean he was very strong for a guy of that size i mean he was completely dominating tackles and guards at the point of attack he stunted inside very well he didn't have a, a, a an arsenal of hand moves an arsenal of, of of moves to really pick from he just really had a bull rush and a, and a stunt inside it, it's pretty much all he had but it worked very very well just didn't know how it was going to work at the nfl level and on top of that he's playing at the division one fcs level he's playing very lesser competition but did do well against dylan radons um in 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 college so, uh, who was a North Dakota State tackle that was drafted uh, early, I believe, in the second or third round. So, um, you know, he did very well. In my opinion, he just, he, he needs to learn how to bend. I think that's the biggest thing he needs to learn is learning how to bend. He has the power. He has the length for sure. He's very long and lanky. If he were to learn how to bend... Um, I, I think that opens up a lot of things because him, him not, him knowing that he doesn't learn how to bend, he often, he often gives up on the edge and tries to just stop and bull rush to get to the quarterback. Listen, sometimes he's effective, sometimes he's not, and he's completely stopped in his tracks, allowing that tackle to set their feet, get anchored down, and and stop Ellerson Smith. If he were to learn how to bend and get all the way around the corner and just keep going, he can make himself a fine NFL career for the New York Giants, and so. 
he needs to learn a lot more of a lot more pass rush moves but i i that's definitely coachable it's one of the most coachable things for an edge rusher a lot of these guys don't really have moves coming out of college and they learn it in the nfl so he has all the physical attributes to get the job done in the nfl i think was a great sleeper pick in the nfl draft especially the fact that he added on weight now and he looks like a whole different animal i i mean i'm extremely excited about Ellers, ellerson smith gonna give this grade an a now we move on to our final two picks for the NFL uh, the 2021 NFL draft for the New York Giants and our first guy we, we got was 196 overall running back Gary Brightwell now I said this from the get-go from my first mock draft in this year I said the New York Giants would be wise to target a running back late in this draft whether you get as late as early as the fourth round and down you should get a running back in this draft to kind of change things up and really give yourself an insurance plan should Saquon Barkley go back down. We don't want that to happen. Now, we don't want that to happen, but you wear your seatbelt, not anticipating an accident, but preparing for an accident, right? So we're not anticipating Saquon Barkley getting hurt, but we're preparing for Sa Saquon Barkley to get hurt. Two different things. So Gary Brightwell, to me, is a phenomenal running back i mean a lot better i mean listen you hear this all the time you can find a running back anywhere but this guy probably should have been drafted earlier just didn't get a lot of reps at arizona but he's a tough hard-nosed runner that has very elusive footwork and very elusive speed um you know b before the the 10 yard mark when he gets going he's just immovable he's unstoppable this guy is huge um and he's just a cannonball running at you now he doesn't have too much movement like it does is not a able to turn around and make moves when he's going full speed at the size he is but that's completely okay he's a north and typical you know north and south runner but he does have moves before he hits that speed i mean he does have very deceiving footwork <clears throat> for a running back of his uh for his structure i think would be a great addition for this team and hopefully he makes a team he'll be a guy that that will be very very good in special teams and should be a guy to come in every once in a while to take a hand off and i think he'll be okay so uh, i'm really excited for for gary brightwell um and let's see what he let's, let's see what he has in uh, training camp by the way a grade for gary brightwell there's really much not much you can go wrong in with the sixth round pick next we have rodarius williams the new york giants drafted him with their two uh, 201st pick in the 2021 nfl draft i'm gonna give this grade a b a solid b just because we're adding too much listen i know you can never have too much defensive backs it's a passing league now you need these defensive backs out there but for, with the new york giants with an already potent um cornerback core but in, with adding a, uh, a Dory Jackson, already had James Bradbury, Isaac Yadam, and Darnay Holmes in there. Adding in there, you know, Aaron Robinson, a Dory Jackson, and now Rodarius Williams. It's going to be a... It, listen, I like this kid. He's Greedy Williams' brother. Uh, I see a lot of potential in him. We'll get into more of his uh, skill set later, but... Um, I, I have a really hard time trying to find where the hell he's going to make this roster. I mean, there's just so much talent on this roster. It's going to be hard for him to try to get some reps in there. Now, I think he's a very, very lanky, Squidward-like. Uh, that, that's what I say. I like my cornerbacks. They, I want them to look like a jacked Squidward, okay? My outside corners need to look like jacked Squidwards, okay? Like like Jalen Ramsey, okay? Long, you know, William Jackson, guys like that. Uh, he definitely has that. Rodarius Williams is a uh, very lanky corner, has a, a huge wingspan, and, uh, and that that's, you know causes his ability to break up passes very well and contest the 50 50 ball he does a very good job at that one thing i think is the biggest strength is is being able to break on a route or or cut underneath a route cutting underneath a post cutting underneath an over route cutting underneath a drag cutting underneath a slant i mean that's really his specialty this guy has great uh breaking down speed and, and able to to break on a route and get underneath it and make a play on the football he has a very very good strength in doing that in my opinion probably was not not worth being a six round pick i think he's probably a, a a fifth if anything uh fifth or or late fourth i think i think would be a really good spot for him so um maybe that's my blue lens i don't know but i think he's a really really good prospect so uh you know listen that being said guys that is my analysis 
of the 2021 New York Giants draft class. What do you guys think about this draft class? Where do you guys rank it on Dave Gettleman's uh, drafts, all four of his drafts? How do you rank this one in particular compared to the others? Leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Leave a like if you guys enjoyed. Subscribe if you guys are new. And I'll see you guys in the next video.